Hi, my name is Jason Chonko. I'm with Lakeshore Cryotronics. And in today's quick video, we're going to take a look at making a high resistance measurement. So now let's take a look at the setup for this high resistance measurement. What we've got is the Lakeshore M81. This is our synchronized source measure unit. Uh, it's capable of sourcing current voltage as well as measuring current or voltage in both DC and lock-in. Uh, in this particular case, we're going to look at a one gig ohm resistor in our test box. Um, we've got a voltage output or voltage source, the VS10. And then we've also got a current measurement module. That's the CM10. So this is wired up in series. Our voltage source is going to apply a voltage across the device under test. And then we're going to get a current flow through the resistor and we're going to measure that with our current input. Again, this is a one giga ohm resistor. Typically above 10 mega ohms, you're going to want to use a voltage source and a current measurement to get the most accuracy. Uh, so now I would like to go through some of the standard setups for making a high resistance measurement and describe some of the advantages and disadvantages of the different techniques that you have available. So what I've started out with is I am in DC mode, so we're going to be sourcing a, a set value of DC uh, a voltage. In this case, I've set it up to do 10 volts, and then I'm going to flip over to the measurement channel. And you can now see that the readout is 994.3 mega ohms with an excitation of 10 volts. So we're around 1 gig, which is what we would expect for this 1 giga ohm resistor. Um, but now what I'd like to show you is, again, 994. If we switch back over and we change the polarity, so now instead of or sourcing a positive 10 volts, we're just going to switch that to a negative 10 volts. Now we would expect that our resistance would be the same value, but you see it actually has dropped down to 991 mega ohms. And part of the reason for that is that there is what's called an offset in the calibration of the instrument. Uh, there are also thermal offsets in the, um, in the different junctions or different materials that make up the circuit. So the different connections for the cabling, for example. So we've got some offsets when we're doing a DC measurement source and measure operation, we're going to have some inherent offsets in that technique. And you can actually see it gets much worse if we drop this excitation value down to one volt. Uh, so I'm going to go one volt DC and now I'll go back over and take a measurement. Now you see I'm measuring one gig ohm, but if I change that voltage to a minus one volt, 978 mega ohms. So you can see the discrepancy between plus and minus is going to get even greater as we decrease that voltage value. And again, the primary reason for that is the, the offsets for, a, a, for the DC source and the measure. And uh, so here are the M81, uh, M81 offsets from its specifications page. So you can get a rough idea of what those offsets can be. And offsets are just a part of making a DC measurement. They're always there. Uh, it's just whether they should typically don't matter, but as you get lower and lower in your measurements, as your level of measurement becomes lower and lower or excitation becomes lower and lower, then those offsets become a greater percentage of the total. And so they can affect your measurement even more greatly as you get closer to those smaller values. So one technique that we have to getting rid of or, or it not having as much influence or these offsets having as much influence over your measurement uh, is using a lock-in technique or a lock-in amplifier technique. And in that way, so with the M81, we can really do this quite easily. We can go to shape and we can simply change this to sign. And now we are sourcing, oops, sorry. Now we're sourcing, I'm just gonna change the polarity here, not that it matters much, but now I'm sourcing one volt of a sine wave at 13.3 Hertz. And now I'm gonna change my measurement from DC back to, or over to lock-in. And so now I've locked in on that measurement. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how a lock-in amplifier works today, but in essence, you're using a reference frequency and that, and that reference frequency is then filtered. Uh, the measurement is only filtered around that lock-in uh, reference frequency. And so you're excluding or getting rid of a lot of the other measurement frequencies, uh, noise frequencies that you don't want to necessarily measure. So we're doing an AC measurement technique uh, or lock-in measurement on this resistor. Uh, and then I'm going to just switch it over to resistance. And now you'll see it's 988 mega ohms. Uh, what I should mention is with the DC measurements, you can actually take the plus polarity and the minus polarity, make those resistance measurements, and then take the average of them to get a better estimate. And I think that if you do that, you'll see that it's very, very close to this 988 mega ohms. 
So what you can find is offsets are less effective on an AC measurement technique, so you can get an additional layer of accuracy or more accurate measurement using the lock-in technique. And you, so you don't have to, and you don't have to make twice as many measurements. Again, with that DC technique, we may need to measure in both polarities to make a really accurate measurement, a plus and a minus averages those, that data. So now we have to sample twice. We have to make two measurements in order to do that. With a lock-in technique, uh, in general, a lock-in technique might be a little bit slower for one sample, but it might be faster for multiple samples. So again, uh, DC versus lock-in for high resistance, uh, as well as some more information about the offsets and how they can affect your measurements. So I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, I hope that helped explain some of the advantages and disadvantages or different techniques that you have for making a high resistance measurement. If you have any additional questions or are looking for more information, please go to the website, www.lakeshore.com.